it wasn't very beneficial like I, it helped me when i was in china but then now it's not someone told me they were like open an account like i i brushed it off i was just like ah no like i'm tired i'm packing i'm getting ready for my flight tomorrow why semester would be dry there would be no holidays the second semester would have one holiday maybe here and then there's a one week holiday in the beginning of the semester <laughs> Hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your girl precious and i'm back again with another video and today <laughs> i'm going to do a video about um 10 things that i wish i knew before i studied in china i think there will be more than we'll see how far we go but anyway if it's your first time here please 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 subscribe join the fam i'm a youtuber zambian youtuber who makes content about my medical school journey and bring you guys along i studied in china but now i'm back in zambia and also if it's your if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back and yeah i hope this video will be helpful to someone as you decide whether you want to go to china or not or yeah but anyway so let's get like let's get right to it so I'm not gonna waste any time so the first one is i'll be looking down on my book because my notebook is down and that's where i like yeah i do most of my journaling from and plan my videos so yeah <laughs> i'll be looking down. okay so the first thing that i wish i knew before going to study in china is hsk4 now you guys have made a video about it um and if you don't know what hsk4 is it's an hsk4 certificate like it's a chinese certificate proficiency exam which i expected to do and there are many levels there are like nine levels now but then there's one two three four and i think there we had i got a level i got a certificate for level three but then i was to graduate i needed a certificate for level four and yeah one thing that i wish i knew is that's how much chinese like so when i was going to china they told me that oh yeah you have to know chinese like the point china don't speak english so you have to like most people so you have to learn chinese as a language but no one ever told me that to graduate i could not graduate and get my degree without getting an hsk4 certificate like literally no one told me so that's one thing i really wish and as i studied like i'll just be honest and frank about it like i'm not going to beat around the bush i really felt like the concentration that's given especially your first year that's given towards Chinese is so much like there's so much emphasis directly and I understand because for those who rotate in China like my classmates are rotating it's benefiting them now because they obviously have to speak to patients and all that but then there are some of us who are like rotating from home and it wasn't very beneficial like I, it helped me when I was in China but then now it's not so the emphasis that was that's put into learning Chinese I wish it, I was like given a kind of like an example like this is how much you have to know Chinese but I was just told oh you need to know Chinese and I was just like in the beginning I was very skeptical about it I was just like no I don't want to know Chinese but then later I was just like okay if you've not yet watched my um how i got into medical school video watch it to enter to like to listen and uh know how i got to china but that's like that, but that's like one of the things i was very skeptical about when i went to study in china i was like ah, studying in china studying chinese but then i really did still did not grasp the magnitude of how much chinese is emphasized like chinese is emphasized i felt like if it's the first few years i really felt like they were emphasizing it a little bit too much more than my other courses and i would get upset sometimes but that's one thing that you should really know that if you're going to study in china you have, have to learn chinese and chinese is one of i think the hardest languages so you are going to have to put in the effort and they are going to make put the emphasis so that you can you know know the language but yeah let's move on to the next one no the second the second thing i wish i knew before going to study in china is that i had enough information about the scholarships guys <laughs> when it comes to scholarships in china so um i went to china by an agent again i keep on referring go watch hopefully i'll be able to link it up like the video but like you should if you you should go and watch um how i got into medical school like one of the things i was i went to china through an agent and the agent when i asked him about scholarships he told me there were no scholarships available at the school where i was at i had no much information and i didn't reach out to the school and when i reached i discovered that there were so many people who actually were under scholarship in the first year but apparently the scholarships the way of getting them there was a kind of way which i wasn't aware and that's one thing i really wish before i went to china like how to get scholarships like to have more information because yeah that information when i was doing my research was a little bit scarce but yeah that's the second thing i wish i knew the third thing that i wish i knew before going to study in china is how important carrying a, like having a bank account at home and carrying your 
your visa card from home is very important like your credit card or debit card i don't know i don't know whatever but yes your visa card like how important it is because like when you're in china money transactions are not the easiest so that's like one of the easiest ways to receive money from home like someone just deposits into your account and then you go and you withdraw money from your atm for some reason someone told me like the last day when i was like my flight was the next day and i was supposed to be going to china someone told me they were like open an account like i i brushed it off i was just like ah no like i'm tired i'm packing i'm getting ready for my flight tomorrow why would i go and start, start standing in a bank like on in lines to open an account today and i severely regretted it when i was in china like i had so wished i had a visa card i don't know how i expected like to be receiving money if people wanted like be sending money to me i don't know where i was expecting to be like how to be receiving it but yeah of course you um there is western union and the like but i feel like it was way cheaper to get money and way easier to get money through like your visa card so that's one thing i wish i knew before i went to study in china like how important it is so wherever i going to study just i don't know if you think you are going to be receiving money from home just have your a bank account from your from your home country like it would really help the next thing that i wish i knew about before going to study in china is guys chinese people are serious about school like we are serious about school but then there's chinese people like man even the way they emphasize on their children like chinese people treasure school that's one thing i loved about them but then it used to get hectic when so here in zambia i'll give an example of zambia i feel like we have got so many holidays like there are so many days where it's just a holiday like we have holidays so frequent we even have i don't know we even have what is called 4d where it's like four days of holiday and you would have those at least at least even twice a year or something where you've just got a week which has got two holidays or something or long weekends like it's a norm but china guys like i only remember we had was it we had how many semesters we have two semesters in a year and i feel like the first year the first semester would be dry there'd be no holidays the second semester would have one holiday maybe here and then there's a one week holiday in the beginning of the semester and you're just coming from the uh, like your whole summer break so it's just like do i really need this one week or why can't you put it in the middle and i'm a bit tired of the classes but that's another thing that like i wish i knew like chinese people are so serious and on those holidays when you don't go to class we had makeup classes for them so for example if today was a holiday and we had uh, was scheduled to have a class like say monday and normally on mondays we have maybe two classes because we are approaching a holiday like the monday holiday is coming they would put those classes on a saturday or a sunday like we had makeup classes guys no one told me this is how serious like chinese people are about school <laughs> holidays were a few like makeup classes were all over the place and especially that one week holiday like to cover all the makeup classes for the whole week it used to be hectic you'd find there were so many sundays where you really want to go to church but then there's a class or many saturdays where you thought you'd be free and you'd be sleeping but then you have to go to class or maybe even days where you didn't have a class and they added a class because it was a makeup class so i wish someone told me that you know those people are very serious like chinese people like i wish someone told me that chinese people are very like serious when it comes to classes the way that i learned when i came to zam so there's a way that i learned when i came to zam which is called oskis i'll put it down like apparently <laughs> i don't know maybe other universities have them my university personally does not have this but um so in zambian mostly zambian universities like schools around when they would have they have during their exams especially their clinical exams i've noticed they have the exams by a, a patient like in the hospital by a patient where the doctor asks them face-to-face -face questions and for us in china like um i never heard of those i've never seen them at my school personally and i feel like i wish i knew <laughs> such like that there's so many other differences i'll talk the differences in the next point i'll say in the teaching system between china and zambia that's one of the things i wish i knew we didn't have because it sounds fun but then i've never had the experience of it and we don't have oskies or oh, yeah like it sounds fun but i don't know if i ever experienced one but yeah and then another thing which i wish i knew about china which i didn't was the system like okay so when you're going to study abroad they're telling no the system of teaching is very different from your country and all that but then the emphasis on how different is not there so <laughs> one of the biggest differences that i've noticed like after doing now that i'm rotating in the hospital i'm in my sixth year rotating and one of the things i've noticed you haven't noticed even in my fifth year rotations is that like zambia has got so many like um scales and classifications like even for example you're talking about the symptoms of something or the causes of something okay let's go with causes so maybe we're talking about the causes of a certain disease like they will classify the causes like the black like, start with non-infectious infectious in china we just used to shout them like we just name them like even when you're studying your notes like nothing is classified like 
there's the classifications like the major ones like the word uses are there but like just helping you to remember like there's nothing and even skills like the other day i was on the one recently this happened i was on the one and um there was a patient with heart failure and she had orthopnea and then the the doctor asks us he's like uh what grade of orthopnea does she have and i'm like orthopnea has grades <laughs> and it's like yeah grade one two three uh if one pillow is one two pillows are two and i'm like what that exists so like there are just so many skills and so many classifications that you have to catch up with if you're coming to a date home and you studied in general it's like ah this exists like i didn't know about that so yeah i wish i knew that guys i wish i really wish i knew but it's something that eventually you'll catch up with eventually it becomes especially if you're rotating back home it becomes like you get used to it it's not a very major major big thing but it's just something maybe someone would like to know the next thing I wish I knew before going to study in China is guys, their rules are strict. Now, I've talked this in terms of class. Now, Chinese people are just disciplined people thinking about it. <laughs> because even in school, like, just people are just disciplined. Like, I don't know if they ever broke rules, like, looking at the Chinese students. So, um, when I got to university first year, the first one of the first rules I was told is how much my room was not supposed to have electrical appliances. I'm not allowed to have a kettle, I was not allowed to have a stove, I was not allowed to have um, an element, I was not allowed to have, I was basically only allowed to have my charger for my phone and my laptop even an iron like most people like they're not allowed and that's one thing i really wish like they were so strict with the rooms and i felt like i was back in boarding school in high school here because when you come to zambian universities i feel like i asked like one of the investors in zambia asked my students i'm like what rules do you have and they're like oh we don't have rules like you can do what you want like the campuses give your life just be free and that's that's definitely not china so if you're planning on going to study in china just know that you will be abiding by some serious rules <laughs> and there are serious penalties when you break their rules it's either maybe like my school they would remove you from the scholarship list if you're on the scholarship list or you never get a scholarship again so chinese people are pretty serious like they are very very serious like they do not play so if you are going to china please follow their rules even just not the rules for the school but the laws for the country because they have penalties some of their penalties are very like you know something you wouldn't want to experience so just stick by the rules and all that but yeah i wish i knew that chinese people are so like in order <laughs> like yeah we're also in order but then there's a level and the next thing which I, I personally had never experienced another thing i wish i knew about china is that you could do so much guys like if you have opportunity to study in china and i'm sure many can testify this to many can testify to this is that you have an opportunity to number one develop your talents if you have any talents anything personal because things are easily accessible like even um there's something they call taobao which is like the online store like things are so affordable i learned how to sew <laughs> i learned i taught myself how to sew in in china and why because like i could I could get a machine at an affordable price. I could explore. Like there was a, there was a holiday where I remember just like I was going to learn my talents. Like I I was just like I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, I remember I tried painting and oh, the art is not for me, guys. But yeah, um, just you've got an opportunity to develop your talents. And not only those, there's so much you can do in China. There are so many opportunities. You just have to be someone who's a go getter, like someone who's out there. That's another thing you have to. For the fact that Chinese people have got a very different culture from us, different language, you have to be someone who's outgoing and willing to, you know, chase your dreams. Because for some of us, we used to spend most of our holidays sleeping. And yeah, there are so many things I wish I did, like even traveling. But like, I didn't know China was that open. Like when I was going in my head, I was just like, I'm just going to school. I'm just going to do my medical school and come back and be a doctor. But then there was other parts of myself that I discovered. And you have the opportunity, like things are easily accessible. Their life is way different from the way we live ours. And you just get to know yourself in a different way environment and that i really appreciated yes, i hope you enjoyed this video um those are basically some of the things that i wish i knew about studying in china and most of the others are very obvious which i think you would already be prepared for the food is different and all that but these were the ones i could think about and maybe also i could just add like the language like i'll keep on emphasizing like even when i arrived at the airport in china i was so shocked because i tried to talk to a, a cleaner because i didn't know where to go in the airport and she said me and i'm like okay it's this bad it's serious and i remember the next day when i arrived i tried to go get the sim card i was alone and everyone spoke chinese i could not communicate i was just like this serious and if so if you're planning to go to china i just want you to know that yeah these are some of the things i wish i knew i hope this video was helpful i think there are so many more but with time they'll come out i need to sit down and remember but these are the ones i could remember but anyway thank you so much for watching this video um please don't forget to like this video please don't forget to share with a friend if you know anyone who wants to go to china who's been planning to go to china 
and i just hope like please share this video and let's get to 500 subscribers thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye <laughs>